So a great way to warm up the low back beyond foam rolling and using your lacrosse ball um, is a little routine I like to do. This is typically part of my, my warm up for most workouts, whether I'm doing upper body or lower body. Um, the first movement is what we call a sphinx position. So if you just get onto your stomach, you can prop yourself up onto your elbows so that you're inducing a little bit of extension through the low back. Some things to be aware of if you have stenosis, uh, end range extension is gonna be something that you're going to want to avoid for the most part, or at least access the, the range that you have without creating irritation in the low back. So if you have any sharp pain with any of these movements, then you need to, you need to stop them immediately and then consult your doctor. This is just a great way to get you into some extension after probably sitting all day and getting into too much flexion in the low back, called the sphinx position. From here, we can make it more dynamic and we can go into what we call some prone press-ups, where now you're actively coming into extension in the low back. Some people refer to these as McKenzie's. So again, the idea is to keep the pelvis flat on the floor. If you can only get here without the pelvis coming up, then again, you're only going to use the range that you have. That means you may need to bring your hands out a little bit further in front of your torso as you're doing your press up. So I like to do anywhere from two to three sets of 10. From here, I go right into a child's pose. So I'm rocking back on my heels. If it's easier for you to spread the knees, you can. If this causes any pain in your knees, then obviously this isn't a position you wanna get into. So good position to kind of get some flexion in the low back. One thing that people oftentimes avoid with low back pain is, is creating flexion in the lower back. Uh, it's important to note that many people aren't even able to get into lumbar flexion. So while it's something you need to be cautious of if you have a herniated disc, especially if it's symptomatic, you need to be cautious with flexion. Creating flexion in the lower back is actually something many of us need to work on. Uh, me especially because I'm a little more hyper lordotic or hyper extended in my low back. So I live in extension most of the day. So it feels really good for me, even though I've had a history of low back surgery and low back pain, it's really good for me in, um, in safe positions to then go into some of that flexion. So in a child's pose, you're just gonna focus on nice nasal inhales and exhales through the mouth. After you get anywhere from five to 10 breaths there, you can then come across and get a little bit of a reach with your child's pose so that you're now getting a nice stretch of the lat muscle, okay? And you can do that in both directions, um, making sure that in most of these positions, if not all of them, you're incorporating the breathing. So oftentimes we're getting into positions that our body is not used to being into or not, get, not used to getting into. And so once we get into those positions, it's then important for us to breathe into that new position so that we can get good expansion of our lungs that starts to push against our rib cage. From the child's pose, you can go right into a cat cow. You can use resistance for it so that you're really getting some feedback as to where you wanna push against the band. You don't have to have a band, but here you're focusing on getting a little bit of mobility through the mid back, which will help loosen up the low back. Now you can take this same concept and lower it near the low back. And so now you're focusing on pushing against the band a little bit lower in the spine. And here you're gonna be inducing a little bit of low back or lumbar flexion. Again, something that we all need to focus on. And then you can get some breaths there. If this is a difficult position for you, you can always, or too, too much bend in the knees, you can get onto a table or a bench, and then you can work on a little bit of that lumbar flexion while resting a little bit on a table or a bench, okay? From here, you can go right into a dynamic pigeon stretch, which Johnny has shown us a few times where you're reaching across to get a nice stretch of the hip rotators, okay? In each direction, if that's a little too much torque on the knee, you can then go onto your back and you can just do a simple piriformis stretch from your back, bending the opposite knee and then trying to work that knee towards your opposite shoulder for a pigeon. From there, you're gonna go back into a quadruped position, but now you're gonna bring a leg out 
and you're gonna go into an adductor rock back. So a great active stretch for the inner part of the thigh, which is an area that many of us neglect from foam rolling to stretching to strengthening. We oftentimes forget this inside or medial chain of our body that provides a great deal of stability for our pelvis and our low back. So again, do whatever is comfortable for you, whatever you have time for. Um, I'm showing you quite a few here, but you can, once you, once you get the, the flow down, it can be really, really efficient. From the adductor rock back, again, can't, can't emphasize enough the hip flexor stretch. Knee under hip, rocking the pelvis back and translating slightly forward, isolating the front of the psoas here. You don't want to overextend in the back. If you wanna tie in the quads a little bit more, then you'll go toes into the ground, posteriorly tilting, like you're thrusting here on this side, and then a slight translation forward. You can tie in a little bit more by reaching overhead and then bending away. After your hip flexor stretch, you can prime the hamstrings a little bit by going into a nice reverse toe touch here. So grabbing the toes and then working on getting the knees straight for, again, an active way to stretch the hamstrings and prep them for the workout. And then last but not least, a quick and easy way to kind of turn the core on, cinch you up, or as uh, Dr. Levinson says, zip you up. I'm a big fan of beast crawls because it doesn't require any equipment, but it does require um, quite, quite a bit of, of strength. So literally, it's a crawl, except we're gonna try to keep our knees slightly off of the ground, okay? This is also really good for cross crawl patterning. Neurologically, it's healthy for our brain, but it also forces us to be stable through our core. So the idea is you're trying to keep the knees just off of the ground. You're being firm through the hand up into the shoulder. So it's a great way to also warm up the shoulders, but I'm staying stiff through my core, bracing through my core as I move so I'm not collapsing in either direction. Now you can go forwards and backwards, but you can also bring in a little bit of your lateral chain by going side to side. Again, it doesn't take long, but as you play around with some of these, you'll realize that everything kind of cinches up a little bit in a really good way. Don't do it to fatigue, don't exhaust yourself. You don't wanna go into the workout with an increased risk of possibly injuring yourself. If that's too difficult, you can just start by going from the knees and then progress to the point where you start to work the knees up off the ground. So it's a great follow-up to your foam rolling, to your lacrosse ball work, and to any of your active dynamic stretching.